In this video, we're going to take a look at inherited disorders, which are basically a group of conditions that can be passed on in certain alleles, and so can be inherited from a person's parents. The two examples we'll consider are polydactyly and cystic fibrosis. Let's start with polydactyly. Polydactyly is a condition in which a baby is born with extra fingers or toes. Luckily, it doesn't usually cause any other problems. The main thing to remember about it though, is that it's caused by a dominant allele. So even if only one of your two alleles was the polydactyly one, you'd still have the disorder. We can see how this might work with a genetic diagram. If we were to cross a heterozygous individual who has polydactyly with a homozygous normal individual. Our gametes would be one dominant polydactyly allele and three normal alleles. So the possible offspring will be two heterozygous individuals that do have polydactyly and two homozygous normal individuals. Now a common question for genetic diagrams is to give the probability of the different phenotypes in the offspring. So here we have two polydactyly and two normal, which is a one-to-one -one ratio between the polydactyly phenotype and the normal phenotype. Or we could say that there is a 50% chance of having an offspring with polydactyly in this scenario. Cystic fibrosis, on the other hand, is caused by a recessive allele. And so you could say that it's a recessive condition. How it works is a bit complicated, but basically it's a disorder of the cell membranes. And it results in lots of thick, sticky mucus being released in different parts of the body in particular the airways of the lungs, and in the pancreas. If we use the letter F, then the lowercase f will be the recessive allele that can cause cystic fibrosis. But because it's recessive, you would need two of them to actually have the condition. Although most people have the normal homozygous dominant genotype, one in 25 people are heterozygous, and so have one copy of each allele. We call these people carriers, because they don't actually have the condition themselves, but they do carry one copy of the cystic fibrosis allele, and so could potentially pass it on to their children. So if we do a genetic diagram and cross two of these carriers, then the parent phenotypes would both be normal, the genotypes would be heterozygous, and for the gametes, each parent would give one of each type. So one dominant allele and one recessive allele. Then by drawing the crosses, we can see that we get one homozygous dominant offspring, two heterozygous, and one homozygous recessive offspring. And then for offspring phenotype, we'd have three offspring with normal phenotypes, and one that actually had cystic fibrosis. So we'd have a three to one ratio. Notice though that even though these two in the middle have the normal phenotype, they are both carriers. Now, a little while ago, we did a video on how we can control fertilization with hormones. And we looked at a process called IVF, or in vitro fertilization, where egg cells can be fertilized with sperm in a laboratory. And then once the fertilized egg has grown into an embryo, it can be implanted back into the woman's uterus lining and grow into a fetus. Before it's implanted though, we can actually take one of these cells from the embryo and have a look at its genes to see if it's carrying any genetic disorders, such as polydactyly or cystic fibrosis. We call this process embryo screening. And if we find alleles that could cause a disorder, then the parents and doctors might decide to discard that embryo and use a different one instead. Now, you might personally think that this concept is either great or that it's horrible. But either way, you need to be able to discuss the pros and cons for your exam. The advantages of embryonic screening are that, one, it will help reduce the overall amount of suffering because fewer people will have health problems. And two, it will save lots of money because treating genetic disorders is really expensive. One of the concerns though, is that it kind of implies that people with genetic problems are less desirable than healthy individuals, which could increase prejudice. Another concern is that in the future, 
people might start screening for other traits, such as eye colour, physique or gender. In the UK though, we currently have lots of laws in place to prevent this sort of thing from happening. Anyway, that's all for this video today. So if you enjoyed it, then please do give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.